Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew and welcome to my Sewing for Beginners series. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to complete an overcast stitch. We're going to be looking at how to use a zigzag stitch to go over the edge of the fabric, as well as an overcast stitch on your sewing machine. So if you don't have an overcast stitch, then hopefully you can follow along with the first part of the tutorial where I show you how to do the zigzag over the edge. I would recommend completing the stitch on the edges of your fabric prior to actually constructing the garment or product that you're making. Let's begin by looking at how to finish the edge of this layer of fabric with a zigzag stitch that goes over the edge. Now you can use this with your normal foot and I believe my manual doesn't tell me to change my foot but personally I prefer to use the foot 2A. You, this is designed for the overcast or over edge stitches and I find that it helps to prevent the fabric from sort of curling up along the edges. Again with your sewing machine you're just going to want to look for your overcast or over edge stitch or something like that. Right, we're going to begin by putting the foot down and putting the needle into the fabric holding onto the threads. Now I'm going to be doing the standard zigzag here that is a width of 3 and a length of 1.5. And with this method, because we're not changing the edge or trimming anything off the edge, we can complete the finishing of the edges prior to sewing them together. Now again, you can do a back stitch at the start and at the end. Sometimes you'll find that, that sort of chews the fabric up a little bit, so you might be better off tying off your threads. It will depend on the fabric that you're working with. Now you need to feed the edge of this fabric here into there is a little bar on the foot and you want to feed it onto the edge of the bar, so I just need to tweak mine slightly. It wants to be going right onto the edge of the bar. So the idea with the zigzag is that the needle will be going just over the edge of the fabric here. You may find that you need to have a little play with your tension on your sewing machine and you will find that some fabrics, this technique does not work. So then you may need to take a look at my tutorial that shows you how to do a zigzag and then trim close to the zigzag because you'll find that this curls up the edge of the fabric too much. Obviously you can play with the width of your zigzag and you can play with the length of your zigzag as well. If your machine does not have the ability to choose the width and length of your zigzag, then you're going to want to go for sort of a medium size one. I'll show you this stitch in a minute and you can try and get a similar looking stitch on your individual machine. Personally, I like to take this stitch relatively slow. I find if I increase the speed too much that I get more curling of the edge. And when you get to the end, depending on your fabric, you could backstitch or you could again simply tie off. And there is your zigzag stitch finishing the edge of the fabric. You may have a couple of little fraying sort of tufts of fabric along here. If you do, feel free to take a small pair of scissors and just snip any of those tiny little bits of fabric away. Give this a press as well because you do not want this edge to be curling under. A nice flat press before joining your standard seams together. Now I'm going to show you how you could use an over edge stitch instead of this zigzag stitch and it really depends on your sewing machine what stitches your sewing machine offers you. This is foot 2a and you should be able to see the little bar. That's what I'm talking about when I say the fabric needs to be in line with the little bar. The needle will move from in that sort of central hole to the right of the bar. An example of a foot on my Husqvarna sewing machine is this one here. Very, very similar. There's again a little bar in there and the fabric will need to be in line with the bar, allowing the needle to go from the left, the larger opening there, to the right of the bar. Now I'm going to show you two different overcast stitches that come with my Benina. You will want to take a look at your manual, your individual manual for your sewing machine, and have a look at the overcast stitches. Overcast stitches generally look like these pictures, a zigzag that may be pointing as if it goes over the edge of the fabric. I'm going to start by doing stitch number 15 on my Benina sewing machine. It's called a stretch overlock stitch, but the manual does inform me that it's suitable for firm wovens. 
I'm going to do the settings of the stitch that come with the machine. That's a width of 5.5 and a length of almost three millimeters. And I'm using foot two or 2A. This is my overcast foot and you will need to use an overcast foot on your sewing machine if you want to get a good result to stop the edge of your fabric from curling under. Now it's up to you, you can do a backwards and forwards with these stitches and you just want to test that on your fabric. Otherwise please feel free to tie off like we did with the zigzag. Now you're feeding in the raw edge of the fabric to the little bar on your overcast foot. And you want the needle to basically come off the edge of your fabric. And that is finishing the edge of the fabric for you. And it's really a case of just making sure that you guide it in so that it is sewing over the edge of the fabric. And again, you can do this like I'm doing here on a flat piece of fabric before sewing it to, to another piece. So that is stitch number 15, a stretch overlock stitch on my Benina sewing machine. Feel free to have a go and see what overcast stitches your machine has. Now I'm going to show you a different version, so a very overlock, which is stitch number three on my Benina. And you'll probably have a couple of stitches with your machine as well. It's a case of having a go, seeing what the manual perhaps recommends, for example, my manual does not tell me that my stitch three or very overlock is suitable for, um, for an overcast stitch, but I have used it in the past. It tells me that the very overlock is primarily for fine jerseys, stretch overlock seams and hems. But as I said, I have used it on wovens in the past. It's a case of always testing and checking what works for you, for the fabric that you're working with and what is going to help prevent it from fraying. So again, I'm feeding that edge of the fabric into the bar on the foot, and that is pretty standard. You will always do the same with the overcast stitches that you're working with. And using the overcast foot will help to prevent the edge from curling up. Again, test the backwards and forwards at the start and the end. Sometimes I find that it's easier to tie these off to stop them being messy, but it depends on the fabric you're using. And that is an example of the very overlock stitch three on my sewing machine. So now that I have completed the overcast stitches on the edge of my fabric, I can put the right sides of my fabric together, put my normal presser foot back on, go back to my straight stitch, and I can sew a normal seam just like you normally would with whatever the project is you're making. Obviously you will need to press your seams and just complete the project as normal. And the overcast stitches should help to prevent your fabric from fraying quite as much. You may want to actually press over the overcast stitches once you've done them before sewing your product together. And then it's really up to you. Obviously, once you've sewn your product together, you would press them open. Now, if you decided that you would rather have your seam allowances pressed towards one side, then you could by all means actually overcast the edges together if you wanted to. Just something to think about. The majority of the time, especially when I'm sewing garments, I will press my seam allowances open. And if there are times when I'm not pressing them open, I will generally press them towards the back of the body. Just a little tip. Thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you now know how you can finish the edges of your fabric.